Megan, how you how you feel? How's it going? I'm praying for you, Megan. Thank you, Jonathan. How are you doing, bud? I saw your Facebook Live, and I want to get your story out there. I think it's very important. You know, it's a travesty what's happening to you, Megan, and I, it's just I'm just dumbfounded that they came and took your child away today. Who was that? It was DCF, it was um, CHS, Children Home Society, and it was the police. It's Eric Flowers, the sheriff, and Mike Dilks is the officer that started doing this to us over a year ago. Yeah. He was known for being a racist TikTok star and was disciplined and everything like two and a half, three years ago and just got out of discipline or what I, you know, I don't know the exact facts, but he, it was known like all over the country about him and his wife making racist videos on TikTok while he's in uniform in the police car, all this kind of stuff. And he and the sheriff are best friends. He has done the. He, that's when the first thing they started April Fool's Day last year was illegally pulling me over with unmarked cars and him getting out. I have it all on video in his like street clothes. They just said that they're opening a criminal investigation on us because for hindering the removal when they were talking to us the entire time, and they said that we we uh we oh sorry Sylvie. That we, you know, used up resources and everything. Look, we used up resources. Guess what? They took my baby. Now they just, they just left just now. They had, I have a picture right outside. They had a, right across the street, they had a cop car and a SUV stay here until just now, the whole time after the removal and all night last night, Jonathan. They came at 10 o'clock at night to take the baby. And then when when we didn't let them, they had a police officer in an SUV and they took turns and they had them shining their high beams in my friend's backyard the entire night harassing us. And then they go this morning at 8.45 and get an order on a false report saying that um, I had a baby and that it didn't have medical care. Jonathan, I was at the doctor yesterday with a clean bill of health. I have the documentation. They have no right to do this. This is stealing children, Jonathan. I mean, this is your newborn. You just, what was your daughter's name? Bye, What's your daughter's name? I don't, I'm not telling anybody okay. that. But you, you had a daughter five, five days ago, you went to get medical care for her and then they're acting this quickly. It just shows, what do you think this is about? What do you, who, who do you think is like behind this? Why does this keep happening to you? Is your father involved? It's my father. It's my father. He is running this town like a local mob boss with Eric Flowers. He's the one that got him into office. I have the text messages from a year ago to, to I don't know the time right now, but you know, a year or two ago when my dad, I had an issue and he said, yes, here's Eric Flowers. He's about to be sheriff because I endorsed him. He'll help you. And I have all, I have his phone number, his cell in my phone from that. And now that my dad has done all of this they're aiding and abetting him i was already protesting against cps corruption so they're all targeting me and they know they know me in town even though they say they don't there is a conflict of interest with the local gal they're all friends and um and my father has been doing this he you know the whole the pregnancy and everything he, they've been they're not fighting to return children they're fighting to take children and I, I I believe when when you were at one of your prior court hearings I did ask you I said do you think once your child is born that they'll come get her right away and you said yeah you you said that they'll find a reason to get her right away and it seems like that's just happened now yes and and it's not just me this is a playbook jonathan across our country mm -hmm. they're doing some and they're attacking single mothers and mothers while they're promoting a father's rights movement and they're you know i i i support healthy parenting healthy co-parenting i don't care man woman whatever but the the problem with the father's rights movement and DeSantis is very dangerous doing this is that it is allowing the system and abusers to get hold of children and keep retaliating against mothers. And this is not OK in this country. There are tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of parents and especially mothers fighting for their kids under these same playbooks. 
the same playbook. It's so sick. So, and so they have, what sorry. happens now? Where Where is your daughter now? Is she? They took her. They're going to take her to a hospital to get checked out. Like my, this is not thinking about the best interests of the children. Like children are supposed to stay with their mothers, and DeSantis is supposed five to five eight have... year old children. This is a five yes. eight year old child. Yes. Yes, and DeSantis was supposed to put stuff in place for the efforts are supposed to be offer every service and do everything in your power to keep the children in the home. And DCF told me today that I was hanging out with the wrong people. I was listening to the wrong people and I needed to get help. And they're basing this off what? How are they did coming up with this determination? Who you are supposed to associate right. and who you're not? Do you hear how subjective that is? Yes. Like, yeah. And they're going by who? John and his lawyers. They said that they got a report last night and that's a lie. It's my and my and it is my dad's lawyer and him calling it just like the uh, months ago when they came in and were going through the neighborhood like the Gestapo to hunt me down a, a pregnant lady and asking neighbors and knocking on doors. This is not OK. So John made the report last night on you. I'm assuming that it was him because I was told on the last report when they were knocking on the doors that it was my dad's lawyer and him saying that I was pregnant and that I had had the baby. That's a false report. I was months away from having the baby. So is John, is, is his goal at this point to get your new child and, and, and get full custody of your new child? I, it, well, you know, what's even more gross is that he just took my other children to the Finger Lakes knowing that I'm pregnant and knowing that they were going to take my child. So now my child will go into foster care if I don't find a family to shelter him that I know. Wow. And I, and I asked, you know, the woman that I'm staying with, my dear friend is a wonderful mother, wonderful woman. And I said, can she be sheltered here with Caroline? And they said, yes, but you're not allowed to live there then. So then I'll be homeless. <laughs> So, um, you know, I, I, I feel your pain and your emotion. I can't imagine what a mother is going through to have their newborn, not, not, not any child, but their newborn that they just had. You're bonding with your daughter. You're taking your daughter to get medical care and they come and take your daughter away. Unbelievable. And I, you know, it's, because the judge ordered it. That's so, what they said. The judge. So I noticed. In and your then video, my lawyer watched, said, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. My my lawyer said, you know, well, you didn't come to the hearing this morning. Well, this was the first hearing I had a lawyer. I've never been through this. I was told that my lawyer goes and represents me there, that I didn't need to go to the hearing. So what was this hearing is supposed to be about uh, in reference to your It was an emergency hearing. They did, they didn't they came last night at 10 o'clock at night and said, "Oh, that's fine. We'll talk to you tomorrow." I said, "I have, do you know, I we can talk tomorrow, you know, and I would have given them the documentation from the doctor and everything." And at 11 o'clock last night, they texted me a Zoom link saying, "Here's your court hearing at 8:45 in the morning." And then they put sheriffs out shining high beams in the house and everything all night long. The dogs barking, everything. It is such harassment. And Indian River County has been known for 40 years for being corrupt. This this needs to end. This sheriff has been cheating on his wife with his eight-year-old son. He is, you know, everyone, half the town is calling for him to resign. He needs to resign. And my father needs to be investigated. False reporting, Jonathan, is a third degree felony up to five years. And my dad now has what three counts? And that's not even if you did eat a count on each child. So he you you're you're saying he keeps making these claims, you know, yeah. to who's he claim is he making it to DCS or the local sheriffs? Or yeah, he's having his attorney and other people call because he's hiding. The coward is hidden for a year and not answered me. How does this man say that he loves his child and he wants the best for her and get help? But then you give her the silent treatment, and steal her children, take her home, take her career, have her have to sell her car, do all of this and not even talk to her. Mr. John Walsh, I thought he was so great and powerful right and so so everybody the father you know whatever no he is doing this to me and my mother is doing it too and it's because i'm also speaking out against the national center for missing exploited children what is his end game here what do you think what do, what do you think he's, his goal is trying to do here 
I've watched him do it to other women that his friends are with. They they claim that the mothers have mental illness. They get the children taken to break the mothers because then you are going to go crazy without your children. <laughs> and they ruin these women and they grab their chest to the authorities saying, we just, we did all we can. We don't know what else to do. And they play the victim. It's narcissism to an extreme. It's abuse. It's, it's so many things. It's domestic violence and it's domestic terror. Terrorism. My father is a domestic terrorist, Jonathan. I'm saying it out loud. He is paid opposition. It makes everyone think that there's these huge narratives and it's in the best interest of the public. And it's in the best interest of children. And they are making so much money. They have full immunity. I mean, it is absolutely while they get federal, you know, my dad says all this stuff to then implement federalized policing and all these different things. I mean, it's unconstitutional. It's not okay. And now because I speak out about the National Center, and CPS and everything. Now he's terrified and he's stolen my kids. I also think that there's a financial part of this. I think they had no money two years ago except for an asset and they put something in my inheritance that they want to get guardianship. For. This is guardianship fraud and conservatorship fraud. And Florida is so so uh sorry my words but uh it's one of the highest states for guardianship and conservatorship fraud so what do you want to see happen what changes do you want to see happen what is your next steps what are you going to do what are you going to do now i don't i don't know because i've been speaking out for a year and the country the people need to come together and somebody we need a lawyer we need a good lawyer that will fight for what's right we have done everything i have paralegal i have everything that we will even do the work for the lawyer but we just need someone to fight and we need the people to come together and start realizing what CPS really is. It's not in the best interest of our children. And DeSantis just got to, from 7.5 last year to over $20 million this year, Jonathan. And there are there is every incentive to take children and there's no monetary incentive to return children. So um, do, are they giving you a hearing? Do you have a hearing coming up, a new hearing? Uh, what, what, what's I'm I'm asking my lawyer now who's not doing anything for me. She's, you know, telling me again I'm listening to the wrong people. I'm, you know, all of this. Is this a court, um, a court appointed lawyer? A court appointed lawyer yep. from um, Indian River? Yes. And, and the judge like intimidated me into getting her and um and then the saying that if you take a court appointed attorney, you know, your emotions, you know, the, the the problem is, Megan, is that you didn't go to law school. So none of your stuff is is legal. I believe that you're mentally capable. I believe you're mentally capable. He reiterated it and said, but you're not legally capable. So if you take a court appointed attorney, I will have them refile or they need to refile your motions and I will ju I will rule on them in chambers. And as soon as I took the court appointed attorney, Jonathan, the next day, he struck 24 of my motions for five since January he's been on this case and he has not entertained or given me a hearing on one of my motions. And then they, then he grants emergency emergency hearings for them to take my children out of state to the Finger Lakes until August because they because my dad claimed it was a family tradition. I haven't been to the Finger Lakes since they held me hostage up there with my baby. I, I stopped going up there. That might have been their tradition. That's not my family's tradition. That's not me and my children. I was going no contact with my dad for six months before he did this stuff. And I was, I was in contact with my dad, but I wasn't seeing him in person because of the assault that I can even send you pictures of the assault from my mother with the bite mark on my arm, my nose where I'm trying to heal cancer bloody because she scraped me with her claws while she's yanking my hair down to the floor while I'm holding my other baby. This was two years ago, Thanksgiving. And I stopped contact with them at the advice of my therapist, too, who actually had to stop seeing them because how crazy they were and was helping me establish my life without them. And I was doing it for six months. And my dad would call so frantic about, oh, we want to see Ava, my daughter. They always target her. They're, oh, we you just let us have her for a night. Just let us see. I said, dad, you and mom need to get help. 
I, I love you and I want to have a relationship with you. That's why I live in this town, but you need to finally get help. And I had, my family had never been thriving more, me and my children, maybe. And then my dad couldn't take it because he's a psychopath and he goes and does all of this stuff. And they were lining it up for like a year before, because I think, like I was saying, that they were having financial problems and they got this woman, Rebecca Inman here, who the, she has victims that have called the sheriff and let them know. And the sheriff ignores it. And keeps going with this to to aid in a bed John Walsh and his crime. I mean, John, and God forbid John Walsh would be lying, right? That's not at all possible. Do you think especially with everything coming out across the country about the National Center, about all of this stuff, databases and children and everything. Do you think John Walsh loves you? At this point, this is not love, this is severe abuse. And I was speaking up about the abuse to them. And this is also the point where women, 6% of women are believed when they report domestic violence or children also. This is horrible. DeSantis actually technically has custody of my children right now. So, and he's ignored me. So let me let me understand this. Like it like, okay, so a woman like yourself just had their newborn taken away. As they're taken away, do the police or CPS offer any services for you, like psychological help or medical help? You know, you just had. Well, that's what you, yeah, because that's what they make money off of. That's what the case plan is. You know, they say, oh, we're taking the baby now, but you can fight in court. There's no fighting court. These are not real courts. They are corrupt. They all work together. Even my court appointed attorney, just do the case plan, do the case plan. Then they keep extending the case plan. They never even had proof to do a case plan. And all they do is hide behind the judge's orders. Oh, the judge ordered this. The judge ordered this. The police also do it. They're going, the police are going and aiding and abetting CPS to do these removals. And they have no knowledge you know, the false report, they should have looked at CPS and said, well, we need to criminally investigate now if this is and, a false report. And, and I heard that today on your live, you know, I don't know who was with you. I heard a male voice and they were asking them, yeah. do you know what you're actually coming for? Do you know the details? And they did. They're just, no. they're just going by orders. So a judge yep. just writes something down, says, come and, you know, take this child and that's it. And they just do it, but they don't question it themselves of what they're actually doing. Right. You know, um, maybe, yeah. you know, down the line, you know, authorities, you know, like law enforcement should, you know, know a little bit about details and question it instead of just going by what someone, one person well, writes by yeah. using the stroke of their pen. And that's the thing is that they, um, you know, there are real issues of neglect and abuse. That's undeniable. But you know what? That's why we have a criminal justice system. And you do an investigation. And even in my case, to take my original three children, by law, it's required to do a 60-day investigation. And they did nothing. They did not do it. So that should be in default already. And you know what? They, they We have that system. And if there's a criminal issue or there's a real issue of neglect or abuse, then that needs to be criminally handled and investigated, not just taking children under, you know, this is because I am traditional and this is because I homeschooled. This is every type of, and I'm, you know, Christian and all this stuff. It's every type of discrimination these are these are constitutional rights violations, civil rights violations, liberty rights violations. Also, you know, I know you're going through a, a roller coaster of emotions. I want to let you know you do have lots of support out there and people that love you, Megan. Please don't do anything irrational or, you know, no, it's your I own, you know, it's your own you know, child being thing. taken away. You know, just surround yourself with positive people and, 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 and fight where how you feel you should fight. But don't give up. And don't feel like, you know, you're hopeless in this situation. I know I, I you know, I can just see the pain and, 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 and the emotions in your eyes. And, and, and I do want to share your story. I'm sharing your story because you want to get it out there of what goes on. Yeah, Jonathan, I can't thank you enough. I really for all of that that you said, all of that heart. I really appreciate it, Jonathan. And, you know, I they want to claim mental illness and all of this. And I am still here over a year later of daily from morning to night harassment and threats and terror. You know, my children not coming home, the legal abuse, you know, they just passed stuff about legal abuse. 
and and that's real you know this has been absolutely abusive we're supposed to have a justice system that's supposed to know the truth and stick to it was, and no one's doing that was this a warrant they came with today like an actual warrant oh well that's the, but we don't a judge's order which is basically a warrant they didn't and they, they said they, they, they were going to knock down they said they were going to knock down the door and use force and all of this. The whole the chief of police was standing there, just like a disgusting monster, staring at my children. He's like, "This is taking too long." Did uh, and then they said they're gonna, like I said, they're gonna open a, or they opened a criminal investigation because we hindered the taking of the baby. Well, when I, we have all I heard when the live was you questioning what they're doing and what it yeah. answers, not hindering. And they were talking, hindering would be blocking and you know, um, you know, barricading yourself in. Did they take anything? Did they take any clothing? Did they take any items? They took, they took two blankets because I wanted her to have my smell. So are you are you concerned about how she's going to be treated right now? Yes, and where she's going. I mean, this is sick, Jonathan. This is beyond. And this is happening ev like every minute in our country. This is happening every minute. I am not a special case. Yes, it's harder because of who my dad is, but because of the corruption, but that should be exposing it. This is a huge example for America, Jonathan. Yeah, because, you know, it's, it's your father, John Walsh, and people you know, don't know what's going on behind the scenes and what's going on with his own family, you know, and what's he's, you know, the situation that you guys are going through right now, you know, and this has been going yeah. on how long for about a year now? Over a year, over a year. And in two weeks, they're trying to adopt my children from me. Sad, you know, um, sad. And, you know, I, I just think, you know, and we've talked before, you know, this, it seems like this is over, you know, his parental rights, you know, the way you want to raise your own children, you know, and, and they also know that in Florida, there's no grandparents rights. Oh, wow. So there's no grandparents rights in Florida. Interesting. You know, I think a lot of people have to know that, you know, and should know that and everything like that. Um, well, I'll, I'll keep communicating with you. I'll keep getting this message okay. out. I'm going to get this out right now and share this, what's going on, um, you know, our discussion here. And I will, you know, let me know whenever the court date is, uh, hopefully I can, you know, also help, you know, get the message out. So more people come to your ho uh, court hearing for support and to bring awareness yeah. to what's going on, you know, yeah. just, just, Stay optimistic. It seems like somebody's with you now. Just surround yourself with yeah. people. You know, try to stay away from alcohol and drugs. You know, I'm not saying you I do don't, that. I don't drink. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, just try to keep a positive mindset and just keep fighting. But don't give up hope, Megan. You know, I just, I cannot imagine. I have a cat, right? I couldn't imagine yeah. somebody coming and, you know, taking my cat yeah. away from me. I don't have children. I have a cat. But I can't, could not right. imagine some. I outside, love your cat, by the way. <laughs> outside entity taking away something, you know, your precious. These are your children. And these are agencies that. These are, are humans. These are babies. Like, this is not a dog, like a boat or something. These are humans. They are taking humans. How is be how are people not okay? You know, Trump would talk about the country finding out and everything about these judges and about these systems and about the stealing of our children. You know? Yeah. All right, Megan. We'll, we'll, so we'll chat heartbroken. again. We'll chat again. Just stay, stay, stay hopeful. I am praying for you. I'm praying for Thank you know, people around you. Um Thank you. you know, I just Stay strong. All right, Megan, stay strong yeah. and we'll get yeah. this message out and we'll continue. To I couldn't do it without you guys. I do I call couldn't. this an injustice. I do call this an injustice. I was at the court hearing. Remember when I was kicked out of the court? We were all yeah. kicked out. They didn't even let the public go in the court hearing um, to hear what was going on. They usher John Walsh in, you know, from a side door. He doesn't have yeah. to go through the front. It just seems like a lot of special treatment here. And, uh, yep. you know, this needs to be looked at. This process yep. of what is happening to you needs to be analyzed and looked at for sure. Yes. And and I want that more than anything. I have nothing to hide, Jonathan. I have nothing to hide. And I served everyone with notices of liability. And we have a case number and a judge for federal court now. And this is, it's, I can't thank you enough. I don't know. You know, All I right. really can't thank you enough. We just need to get people 
and I need a team. I need lawyers. I need something that can really defend these children and do what's right. That would be a huge thing for them to do. I know it puts a lot of, you know, they can go after their bar and do this kind of stuff, but this is, we need to stop this in this country. There are better ways to do this. Well said. Stay strong. I'm praying for you. All right. Thank you. We'll talk Thank to you. you. God bless you, Jonathan. Thank you so much, honey. You're amazing. Thank you. God bless. Have a good day. Bye bye. You too. All right. So that was with Megan Walsh, daughter of John Walsh. Um, she's been allowing me to, um, you know, document her experience, share her story, share the conversations that we have. Um, you know, I was at the courthouse before. It's it it's something. I encourage my supporters and followers and subscribers to look into this case more. Google around Megan Walsh, John Walsh, child custody case. It is out there. It's out there. It is real. Uh, CPS, DCF, whatever you want to call them, child agency in Florida, just took her newborn baby away from her today. And I just spoken to her there uh, a, a few hours after it happened. Or she just said, like she said, they just left their house. Uh, the authorities and police now they have her newborn baby uh, this is this exists this is what's going on so Jonathan Lee Riches I'm reporting sharing the story of Megan Walsh everybody be safe God bless